and specifically on Russia, do you feel any obligation now, as they've been insisting that this isn't the case? To show the proof, as it were they say put your money where? Your mouth is and declassify some of the intelligence, some of the evidence that exists. And more broadly, as it relates to Donald Trump on this very topic, are you concerned about his relationship with Vladimir Putin? Especially given some of the recent cabinet picks, including his selection for Secretary of State. Rex Tillerson, who toasted Putin with champagne over oil deals together. Thank you. President Obama, I may be getting older, because these multi-part questions, I start losing track. I can assure the public that there was not the kind of tampering with the voting. Process that was of concern and will continue to be of concern going forward. that the votes that were cast were counted, they were counted appropriately. We have not seen evidence of machines being tampered with. So that assurance I can provide. That doesn't mean that we find every single potential probe of every single. Voting machine all across the country, but we paid a lot of attention to it. We worked with state officials, etc. And we feel confident that that didn't occur and that the votes were cast and they were counted. So that's on that point. What was the second one? Question, the second one was about declassification. President Obama, declassification. Look, we will provide evidence that we can safely provide that does not compromise sources and methods.
But I'll be honest with you, when you're talking about cybersecurity, a lot of it is classified. And we're not going to provide it because the way we catch folks is by knowing. Certain things about them that they may not want us to know. And if we're going to monitor this stuff effectively going forward, we don't want them to know that we know. So this is one of those situations where unless the American people genuinely think that the professionals in the CIA The FBI, our entire intelligence infrastructure many of whom, by the way, served in previous administrations and who are Republicans are less trustworthy than the Russians. then people should pay attention to what our intelligence agencies have to say. This is part of what I meant when I said that we've got to think about what's happening to our political culture here. The Russians can't change us or significantly weaken us. They are a smaller country. They are a weaker country. Their economy doesn't produce anything that anybody wants to buy, except oil and gas and arms. They don't innovate. but they can impact us if we lose track of who we are. They can impact us if we abandon our values. Mr. Putin can weaken us, just like he's trying to weaken Europe. If we start buying into notions that it's okay to intimidate the press. Or lock up dissidents, or discriminate against people because of their faith or what they look like. And what I worry about more than anything is the degree to which, because of the fierceness of the partisan battle, you start to see certain folks in the Republican Party and Republican voters suddenly finding a government and individuals who stand contrary to
everything that we stand for as being okay because that's how much we dislike Democrats. I mean, think about it. Some of the people who historically have been very critical of me for engaging with the Russians and having conversations with them also endorsed the president-elect. Even as he was saying that we should stop sanctioning Russia and being tough on them. And work together with them against our common enemies. He was very complimentary of Mr. Putin personally. That wasn't news. The president-elect during the campaign said so. And some folks who had made a career out of being anti-Russian didn't say anything about it. And then after the election, suddenly they're asking, well, why didn't you tell us that maybe the Russians? We're trying to help our candidate? Well, come on. There was a survey, some of you saw, where now? This is just one poll, but a pretty credible source 37% of Republican voters approve of Putin. Over a third of Republican voters approve of Vladimir Putin, the former head of the KGB. Ronald Reagan would roll over in his grave. And how did that happen? It happened in part because, for too long, everything that happens in this town Everything that said is seen through the lens of does this help or hurt us relative to Democrats, or relative to President Obama. And unless that changes, we're going to continue to be vulnerable to foreign influence. Because we've lost track of what it is that we're about and what we stand for. With respect to the president-elect's appointments, it is his prerogative, as I've always said.
for him to appoint who he thinks can best carry out his foreign policy or his domestic policy. It is up to the Senate to advise and consent. There will be plenty of time for members of the Senate to go through the record. Of all his appointees and determine whether or not they're appropriate for the job. Martha Raditz Question, MR President, I want to talk about Vladimir Putin again. Just to be clear, do you believe Vladimir Putin himself authorized the hack? And do you believe he authorized that to help Donald Trump? And on the intelligence, one of the things Donald Trump cites is Saddam. Hussein and the weapons of mass destruction, and that they were never found. Can you say, unequivocally, that this was not China? That this was not a 400-pound guy sitting on his bed, as Donald Trump says. And do these types of tweets and kinds of statements from Donald Trump embolden the Russians? President Obama, when the report comes out, before I leave office, that will have drawn together all the threads. And so I don't want to step on their work ahead of time. What I can tell you is that the intelligence that I have seen gives me. Great confidence in their assessment that the Russians carried out this hack. Question, which hack? President Obama, the hack of the DNC and the hack of John Podesta. Now, the but again, I think this is exactly why I want the report out, so that everybody can review it.
and this has been briefed, and the evidence in closed session has been provided on a bipartisan basis not just to me. It's been provided to the leaders of the House and the Senate. And the chairman and ranking members of the relevant committees. And I think that what you've already seen is, at least some of the folks who have seen the evidence don't dispute. I think, the basic assessment that the Russians carried this out. Question, but specifically, can you not say that? President Obama, well, Martha, I think what I want to make sure of is that. I give the intelligence community the chance to gather all the information. But I'd make a larger point, which is, not much happens in Russia without Vladimir Putin. This is a pretty hierarchical operation. Last I checked, there's not a lot of debate and democratic deliberation. particularly when it comes to policies directed at the United States. We have said, and I will confirm, that this happened at the highest levels of the Russian government. And I will let you make that determination as to whether there are high-level Russian officials who go. Off rogue and decide to tamper with the US election process without Vladimir Putin knowing about it. Question, so I wouldn't be wrong in saying the president thinks Vladimir Putin authorized the hack. President Obama, Martha, I've given you what I'm going to give you. What was your second question? Question, do the tweets and do the statements by Donald Trump embolden Russia? President Obama, as I said before,
I think that the president-elect is still in transition mode from campaign to governance. I think he hasn't gotten his whole team together yet. He still has campaign spokespersons sort of filling in and appearing on cable shows. And there's just a whole different attitude and vibe when you're not in power as when you're in power. So rather than me sort of characterize the appropriateness or inappropriateness of what he's doing at the moment. I think what we have to see is how will the president-elect operate. And how will his team operate, when they've been fully briefed on all these issues. They have their hands on all the levers of government, and they've got to start making decisions. One way I do believe that the president-elect can approach this that would be unifying is to say that we welcome a bipartisan. independent process that gives the American people an assurance not only that votes are counted properly, that the elections are fair and free. but that we have learned lessons about how internet propaganda from foreign countries can be released. Into the political bloodstream and that we've got strategies to deal with it for the future. The more this can be nonpartisan, the better served the American people are going to be. Which is why I made the point earlier and I'm going to keep on repeating this point. Our vulnerability to Russia or any other foreign power is directly related to how divided, partisan, dysfunctional our political process is. That's the thing that makes us vulnerable.